Hi, good afternoon. My name is Laura Berman. I am the e-commerce instructor for the Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Center for Technology Outreach. What that means is I work with individuals and small businesses like yourself to help you gain an online presence and to use the internet to market and to afford your products and services. So today, Mr. Alan Grill asked me to speak to you about mobile payment processors. I apologize for not being able to be there in person with you. I'm recording this here from my office using Google Hangouts, and this video will be posted to YouTube. Mr. Alan Terrell will have the link, and you can go back and view it and reference it anytime you need to. I will also apologize for my voice. I know I sound funny today. The Mississippi allergy season is kicking my butt right now, so if I have to stop and take a drink of water or clear my throat, please excuse me beforehand. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about mobile payment processors and why you would want to consider using mobile payment processors for your business. Now, I'm sure there's some of you out there who make sales on the go. You set up at farmer's markets, you might set up at a festival, or you might just be getting started and you're not doing enough business to pay for a full payment processor in store. Mobile payment processors are a great way to go, and that's what we're going to talk about today. I must first say that this information is only for educational purposes. I'm not promoting one product over another. I'm just simply, simply letting you know what your options are and what is available on the market. We're going to talk about why you need to accept credit and debit cards in your business. Then we're going to look at different mobile payment processors, PayPal here, Square, Pay Anywhere, you've probably heard of those three before, as well as Intuit Go Payment, and then Market Link, which is a program that's available to the, through the U.S. Department of Ag and Commerce for small fruit and vegetable growers. And then also, we're going to talk about online payment gateways, because if you're a business, you want to, be, you want to already have a website or are planning to build a website that you may sell your products or services on, and you'll have to take payments online as well. So if you use your credit or debit card as your main form of payment, like many of us do now, you have probably been checked out at a mobile payment processor. I know some of the most popular places I've seen mobile payment processors are restaurants, hair salons, individuals that are in the service industry also use mobile payment processors. There's also um, the large box, big box chain retailers are using a form of mobile payment processors. If you've been in a large, um, you know, like a home improvement store and you've got one thing in your hand, an associate will come up, pull out a device, scan your card right there, and go ahead and check you out. Why would they do that? Well, these retailers don't want to miss out on the sale. And that's what we're going to discuss today is how you can capitalize on a sale and not miss out when your customers carry only plastic. And by plastic, I'm meaning debit and credit cards. What you will have to consider is if the fees and transaction rates are worth incurring to grow your business. So you can see right there, the average person carries three bank issued credit cards, four retail credit cards, and one debit card. That's a lot of plastic in the average wallet or average purse. So I know this study is a little outdated from 2011. I've not been able to find more recent up-to-date content, but it found that 27% of all point-of-sale purchases were made with cash. Now I'm sure it's well below that now. So less, you know, one in four purchases are made with cash. It predicted in 2017, which we're closer to right now than this 2011 study, was that only 23% of those will be made cash. Um, a few statistics that I have found online is that 53% of consumers' purchases are in plastic compared to 43% in 1999, and then one in five consumers do not carry cash on them. If they, um, more than 60% of consumers carry less than $20 in cash. And at the end, I'm going to have a list of links of where I found these various um, resources and statistics so that you can go and take a look at for yourself. So again, um, data from Intuit. Intuit, who owns QuickBooks, if you're familiar with QuickBooks as a small business owner, 
of the nation's 27 million small businesses do not accept credit cards. That's a huge number. Again, here's another report. 13% of point of sale purchases by 2018 will be made by mobile point of sale systems. So there we've got a prediction on how many um, point of sale purchases are going to be made with a mobile payment processor like Square or PayPal here. This is what we're going to talk about today is we're going to start with PayPal. PayPal has been around since 1999. PayPal was created out of, out of eBay and it has continued to change with the market over time in these. So PayPal here is free. If you have a PayPal account, you go on and register and you will get a free PayPal here. You can request multiple devices. It will work on any Apple device or Android device. So I'm going to actually demonstrate this on my iPad today, how PayPal here works. You must download an app for it to work. You will incur transaction fees. So each time you run a credit card, you will receive a transaction fee. You must have a PayPal account to use the app. Your customers do not need to have a PayPal account. All you're simply doing is running their credit or debit card. So how much does it cost to use PayPal here? Well, it's 2.7% per swipe. Anytime you swipe a card, you're going to pay 2.7% of the total amount that is being paid. You can also key in a credit card. You might get a phone order or you might have a credit card that doesn't swipe. Well, you can key it in, but it is a higher percentage rate and plus an additional charge. So PayPal does allow you to accept international credit cards, which could be very important if you're in a tourist street area um, where you have a lot of international travelers. Here are some additional features of PayPal here. You can also accept checks. You can actually scan them with your PayPal app. Your funds will be available in six business days, so you do not immediately receive those funds in your PayPal account. You can also keep track of cash payments. Again, if you're out um, on the go or if you're in your business, you can use it as a register to keep up with how much, um, how much you do in sales and transactions each day. You can create invoices and send to people. You're able to transfer funds. You can offer discounts. You can even set up um, your tax rate. You can accept tips all of that good stuff and then what I think is one of the nice features at the end is you can text or email receipts. So PayPal does require that if the amount is over $50 a person has to sign for um, this transaction. You also have the option to have every person whose card you run to have them sign. So there's a little bit about PayPal. Um, PayPal is a universal form of payment. So you can see last year in the fourth quarter, they had 161.5 million active PayPal accounts. So there are a lot of people using PayPal worldwide here in the United States. So PayPal will collect and track mobile and online payments together. So if you're looking at putting up a website for your business, you can track online payments and mobile payments through the same PayPal account. One of the cons of PayPal, I guess is how you could say it, is that money is not directly deposited into your bank account. The money goes into your PayPal account, then you must log into PayPal and transfer that money into a bank account. So PayPal says it takes up to three to four days. I've not seen it take, it's usually just a day or two before your money appears, but if that is something to keep in mind, in PayPal. PayPal acts like a bank now. You can get debit and credit cards from PayPal, but you do not immediately have your money. You have to go and log into your account and transfer those funds. But PayPal is a secure worldwide um, form of accepting payments now. So, if you do not already have a PayPal account, you want to sign up for a personal account or a business account. If you sign up for a business account, you will have to provide um, a tax ID number or your social security number. Again, there's that information. You'll have to provide your social security number and tax ID number. You'll have to confirm 
your bank account with PayPal. What that means is PayPal will make two small deposits into your bank account. They'll probably be like seven cents and 12 cents, very small amounts. You will have to log into your online banking or check with your bank to see what those amounts were. PayPal will then withdraw that amount a few days later, but you have to log that in into your PayPal account so PayPal can confirm that you have access to the account that you gave them and tell them how much those deposits amounts were. If you sign up as an individual, you will have to provide the last four of your social and date of birth. So the more volume you do in transactions as a business, then um, in a business account can actually reduce your transaction rates. It's encouraged to sign up as a business if you're going to do over $500 a month in sales. So if you're just going to use your PayPal here account every now and then, you're not going to do over $500, you should be fine to sign up as a business. But um, if you're going to do more than that, then it's encouraged that you sign up as a business. So you're going to have two options for signing up with PayPal, a standard plan or a pro plan. Stand, um, sign up for the basic free standard plan. You can see it accepts credit cards and PayPal on site. You can swipe cards in your store and on the go, and you can create the email invoices. When you have the pro account, if you're doing a lot of business, you might decide that this is specifically for you, and then you can move into this plan. But getting started, just sign up for a basic PayPal account, and this is when you sign up as a business. You will not be asked this when you sign up as an individual only when you sign up as a business. So if you have a pay, uh, PayPal account already and you want to request a PayPal here, you will go to paypal.com forward slash here and you will sign up. PayPal, you already have an account with them. They already have your information. And so you will simply have to request that PayPal here. You can also do this from your mobile phone. So if you have PayPal on your mobile phone, or you can go ahead and download the PayPal Here app and request a PayPal Here through the app. So you will just go to your app store and you will search for PayPal Here. You'll put in your cell phone number and you'll follow the instructions and then PayPal will send you the PayPal Here in the mail. It does take about one week to receive. And I'm going to show you, demonstrate, what the PayPal here looks at, looks like. So it's going to come in a box, just like this one right here. It may have changed a little. I've had this one for over a year. And so this is what the PayPal here looks at. It's very small, it's not very big. Here's my cell phone. I'll plug in just to show you the size ratio right there. That is what it looks like. You will have to have the PayPal app on your phone to use it. And so I have that app here on my phone. Actually, I'll hold it up close. I've got several mobile payment processor apps. You can see um, the PayPal here is the one in the middle, the blue square. I apologize for the glare as well. And so you're required to log into your PayPal account which I'm going to do very quickly. I thought I've already done that. Actually, let me switch to my iPad. Maybe you can see it better. So I'm doing all of this in live time here in my office. So I am logged in on my iPad. A little box just popped up that said it was detecting the reader. So I know it's hard to see um, through the screen there. So right here, one of the neat things that you can do with the PayPal here in the square is you can put in the items that you're checking out. So you can see here, it's going to appear backwards, but I put in some items, bell peppers, grits, let's see, what else do I have on there? Pillow, potato warmers, all kind of different things listed where I've used this as an example. It's very easy to ring someone up with PayPal here. You will simply just tap whatever you're buying. If you want to buy it twice, you tap it again. And so I owe $20. I'm just going to press charge. 
and then it's prompting you to run their card. So they can either, um, I can swipe the card when I'm ready, or I can key it in, or I can select cash if the person's paying my cash so I can keep up with that amount um, registered there. It is free to request a PayPal here. Even if you're not sure that you're going to use it right away, I would encourage you to go ahead and request one. It's free. I only use mine for demonstrations. I don't use it very often at all. So now let's talk about Square and some of the differences between Square and PayPal here. So I'm going to pull the PowerPoint back up. So again, I'm showing you to download and install the app once you receive your PayPal here in the mail, or you can go ahead and do that and request the PayPal here device through the app. So let's talk about Square. The Square Reader is also free, just like PayPal here. It works on Apple and Android devices. Again, you must download that app for it to work. Transaction fees will be applied to each card that you process. One of the neat things about Square is you can order additional hardware. There in that picture, you can see that that's a little checkout station where you put your iPad in, and at the bottom, you will scan a card, and then there's even a cash drawer, and you can get a printer from Square. So you can actually get a whole point-of-sale system to use in your store, and then you can use your um, Square mobile payment processor on the go. That Square stand shown there retails for $99. This is what the Square looks like. And again, I have one that I will show you in a moment. So Square is 2.75% per swipe. So PayPal is a little bit cheaper at 2.7%. And then the keyed in rates are the same for Square and PayPal. So again, Square has the cash management feature. You can issue full and partial refunds. I also saw where Square, you can now split up a check. So you can accept two debit card transactions for one payment or on one transaction. You can accept tips. Again, you can text or email those receipts. You can take payments offline. You can do this with PayPal as well. So if you don't have a strong internet connection, you can still run that card. Then when you connect back to the internet, all that information will be uploaded. You can get customer feedback, and I'll show you an example of the customer feedback that you can get through Square. Square has inventory management, so you can actually manage your inventory with Square. So as you're selling something, it will tell you that you only have three left. You just sold two, you're down to one. You can also send invoices, so there is a charge for invoices. And then you can also do gift cards with Square, which is a neat feature. Square requires a signature for all transactions over $25. The pro about Square is that you're the, the, when you scan a credit card and if you scan it for $25, once they take out their 2.75%, the remaining balance is deposited immediately into your bank account. They say one to two business days, usually within that day, you have the money that you scan the credit card for. So immediately you receive your funds from Square as where PayPal, you have to log in and transfer the funds to your bank. So um, Square now gives you the option to build a website with them. They have a lot of extra add-on options. One of the neat things I, um, as I've already mentioned is the inventory management. Let's look at Square feedback. So one of the neat things is when you run a credit card and you um, someone's email address will be tied to that credit card. If you use a Square at one location and put in your email address, Square will associate that email address with your credit or debit card. So when you use that credit or debit card again, a receipt will automatically be emailed to you. So what you can do is you can have a conversation with a customer who left a, um, left a review. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So what Square will do is they will send that customer a receipt. You can also set it up so that you can receive feedback. So that's a screenshot right there. You just press the smiley face, um, the happy face or the sad face, if you like, um, based on your experience. So you can also track customer behavior. You can see how many times people are coming into the store based off when you scan their debit or credit card. Square is gonna help you keep up with how many times that customer is coming. 
This is a free service with Square. It's a great way to collect feedback from your customers and to learn what they like or dislike. So this is actually from a transaction that I had not too long ago. So I checked out somewhere. Well, actually it was, wow, this is an old screenshot from September, 2014. You can see it cost me 33.77. So I rated that this was a good experience by selecting the smiley face. And then you can see, tell us what we got right. So I can specifically tell, um, so as a consumer, I can say that the customer service was great. The selection was great. I enjoyed the environment. And then if you did not have a favorable experience, you can also say what you did not like. You can leave a comment. And what's neat is Square allows you to respond back directly to that customer. So if someone did not have a good experience, then you can respond back to them. So how do you get a free Square? Well, you'll go to squareup.com. You'll have to sign in, create an account, and then you will um, request your Square. You can also download the app. It's called Square Register. To sign up for Square, you will only need to provide the last four of your social and a date of birth. You can sign up as an individual or business. You do not have to pick one or the other like you do with PayPal. This is the basic information that Square is going to ask you to get started. And so there is a screenshot of how you'll download and install that app. So you will just search in your app store for Square Register. So if you want to go ahead and download the app, you can do that right now during this presentation and you can request your Square. So you can see I've downloaded the app. These are screenshots. You can create an account or you can sign in. So that's what screenshots look like right there. You can see that I've gone in and I've put in some actual items that I've got shown there. And so you can change, you can um, change a price, you can take tax off. You see there on that screenshot, I have for it to always add the 7% Mississippi sales tax. You see on Bell Pepper, I have different options. So you can um, differentiate between the same product. So I have a Bell Pepper, but the yellow is going to cost more um, than the red than the green. So once I click Bell Pepper, or actually I will tap Bell Pepper on my phone or tablet, you will then choose what color. So right there you can see that um, the three different prices and you select which one you would like to purchase. And then so you can see that I have bought four things and it costs seven seventy six. So I'll run up, rung up one green bell pepper, one yellow bell pepper. I went ahead and threw in a strawberry jelly and a yellow squash. And that's my total, including the Mississippi 7% sales tax. So once you click charge, you will run someone's credit card. This is what it looks like. I tried showing you with PayPal here. I know it was kind of hard to see, so I've got these screenshots here. You can choose cash. Keep up with that chat, that cash. You can accept a, a check. Now, a check, you will have to deposit into the bank, but you can keep up with it through the square point of sale system. With PayPal, PayPal will actually cash that check for you. And then you can also send invoices. So remember, there is a charge to send invoices with Square. So I chose a, a debit card. You can see right here, these are screenshots where I ran it for a dollar. You have the option to offer a tip. You can take this off. So I made it where you have to sign on all payments when um, I accept a payment from someone. So I was really just charging myself a dollar or seven. You can see you can just let someone sign with their finger on your device. And this is the email that I will receive. So um, once you, that sale goes through, then you can ask the customer if they want to have a receipt text or email to them or just no thanks at all. You might not want to send your receipt. So immediately upon checking myself out, I received an email saying that I accepted a dollar um, seven payment. But then you see your Square balance is currently $1.04. Square kept that $0.03 cents to cover that transaction rate. 
So you have these settings features on Square and PayPal here where you can change all of your settings. Right here, this is your business information. You can actually upload a picture of your logo if you want. You can show that photo and um, check out or not. You can add your social media handles. And so you can see right there, this is from Ward's Fast Food of Poplarville. I was going through there and they didn't upload a specific logo, but they do have their name and they have a phone number where you can reach them. So again, I had mine on where I accept a signature for any amount, but you can turn this off for under $25. So Square does not require a signature until it's over $25. PayPal here is $50. This is where you can change the sales tax. So you can, um, you've got different taxes for different locations. If you've got an additional municipality tax you need to add, you can add that in as well. You also have the option to add tips. And so you can give people the option to add a tip. You can um, show the percentage tips, tip amounts as well. Then you, like I said, you can take payments offline. So right now, let me show you what the square looks like. My square came in a little box just like this. You open it up. There's the square reader. Again, I'm going to plug this into the um, headphone jack on the bottom of my phone. And then I have the Square app already there on my phone. You can see that my card reader has been detected. And so all of those items that you saw screenshots for are there on my phone. So you will just hold it up and you will just scan and take payment from someone. I will tell you, I've seen these Square readers available in Best Buy and other stores. You can get one for free. If you need one immediately, you can go out and purchase one you can request additional square readers if you want to have multiple employees using the square throughout your business or your stores you can do that so if you saw that slide that just appeared i'm also going to show you um, talk about payanywhere.com so it came in a little plastic case like this And so it's a little different. I like this. It's actually on a lanyard. You don't use it. You can put it around your neck, plug your phone in, and scan that credit card. So let's learn more about Pay Anywhere. So Pay Anywhere, it costs 2.69% excuse me, per swipe, so that it is 1,000th of a percentage point, um, excuse me, 100th of a percentage point less than um, PayPal. So the rates are comparable with PayPal and Square. The keyed in rate is 3.49% plus 19 cents per transaction. That's four cents higher than PayPal and Square. Your, your funds are deposited within one business day. So you will apply as a business if you have a federal tax ID. You will apply as an individual if you do not have that federal tax ID. You can also see there's an option to um, use payanywhere.com in your storefront. So you can see that it's 1.69% per swipe. Also, there's Intuit Go Payment. This is the only one I do not have an example of. If you're using QuickBooks and you're using that to keep up with your um, transactions for your business, you can request a Intuit Go payment. So if you're already using um, QuickBooks, then um, I don't think there's a fee. There's different options for if you're already subscribed and paying monthly to QuickBooks. So there's also the pay as you go option which is a swipe, a swipe rate of 2.4%. And then you see the keyed in rate, but there's also a transaction fee of 25 cents. If you're doing a high number volume of sales, 
you can pay a flat rate of $19.95 per month, and then your swipe rate is only 1.75%. This is something you'll have to decide what's the best option for you. If you're already using QuickBooks, this is a great way to sync all of your transactions into QuickBooks. But um, if you're familiar with QuickBooks, you can go online and look at the different options that are available. So some common questions I get about mobile payment card readers are, can mobile card readers be used at the same time for the same business account? So for PayPal, yes, additional users will need to have their own PayPal login. They can take payments at the same time, and you will determine the account access that that person will have. So they cannot see all of your financials. You can give them different points of access. So one is just where they can accept payments. Square, you can invite users to use your Square account and you keep all of your financial information private. Additional readers are free and they can take payments at the same time. So you can use it in your business as you're out on the go. If you're at multiple festivals or events, again, you can accept payments at the same time. If I have anyone that is listening that is a fruit and vegetable growers, you can participate in Market Link, which is a USDA program administered by the Mississippi Department of Ag and Commerce. This is where you can accept EBT cards and credit and debit cards. If you're currently not accepting EBT cards, then you'll be eligible for this program. If you are already accepting EBT cards as a fruit and vegetable grower, you will not be eligible for the program. If you would like to learn more about this, then contact Mr. Kirby Green. There is his email address and his phone number. You can see right there, the it's a 1.79 per swipe, which is a um, lower percentage rate than what we saw available from some of the commercial products. And then there's also a 15% transaction fee on debit and credit cards. So it's the 1.79% plus the 15 cent transaction fee. And then there's an additional transaction fee for the EBT cards as well. So online payment gateway. So you can use PayPal as a checkout method on almost any website you build or purchase. And Square is becoming more and more readily accessible as an online payment gateway as well. So you can check with your current payment processor if you currently have a um, card processor in your business. You can see if that same company offers an option or a secure checkout way for your website. If you build your own website through a template-based site like Weebly, Wix, Shopify, or BigCommerce, you can only use the payment processors that they offer, which include Square or PayPal. Um, some of them only accept PayPal. Some also include Square. So if you want to streamline all of your transactions, you want to take transactions on the go um, with your mobile phone, you want to accept payments online and in your store, you will want to look at a payment gateway that can accomplish that um, through all three methods. So PayPal is one, you can use PayPal here, you can use it in your store, you can use it online, as well as Square, um, you can do that as well. So, and I know many of you might already have a business and you're already tied in with a payment processor and I know they lock you in for several years at a time. This is something I want to mention. If you have no contract with Square or PayPal or any of these mobile processors, you use them as you need them so you don't get um, tied into a long-term contract either. So security, people always ask, is this safe? You know, what am I doing? So always require signature on purchase. This is the first thing you can do. So there is a fraud protection with each of the mobile payment processors. You'll want to go through and read that and research the fraud protection with each company to decide which one you're more comfortable using. And then I encourage you to read the user terms, the um, user agreement and terms of agreements for each company to see what um, you're signing up for. So there is always a risk when accepting credit and debit cards. This is just the world we live in now. We've seen very large companies that have been hacked or hacked or breached. There's a lot of information to read on PayPal and Square about their policies and the protections they provide. They tell you how to identify fraudulent cards. 
what rights you have, and the protections and processes they have in place to protect you as the seller. So they want you to use these features and these options that they have, and they have some different um, features set up security-wise to protect you. Here's a list of the links in the different articles where I pulled statistics. I will be sharing this um, presentation with Mr. Alan Terrell, so hopefully he has passed it out to you tonight as well. If you have any questions or would like more information or you come across something you're not familiar with, feel free to give me a call or send me an email. I know on the 14th, I'm going to be out of town for a week. That's why I'm not able to be there with you. So if you send me a question, just give me a few days to the next week to get back with you and I'll get called back up. I'd encourage you to follow us on social media so you can find out more about what we do here in the Center for Technology Outreach and about the different programs we have to offer. If you have any questions about building a website or anything that has to do with bringing your business online, feel free to contact me. So, to thank you so much for allowing me to present to your group tonight, and I look forward to hearing from some of you.